All right, y'all, let's get in here so we can talk about this latest episode of Love During Lockup. And before we even get into it, make sure y'all drop down in these comments, share, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn your post notifications on. I appreciate all of that. And let's go ahead and jump right on in. Now, we start off with Tenny and Rob. They working out together. That's cute or whatever. But then we get into, y'all remember last episode when he had said he had something to talk to her about, then completely ignored it. Okay, well, we get into it today. Now, we find out that a couple of years ago, Rob had Tenny send her mom, send his mama some money and then ask for it back. What kind of bitch made shit is this? Now, granted, nothing is wrong with it. If you decide to change your mind after you said, hey, Tenny sent mama $500 for me. Okay, that's fine. But when you made the choice that you wanted that money back, you dead ass fucking wrong for putting your wife up to being the one to ask for that fucking money back. I don't give a damn. You want to do all this boasting and bragging about you got cell phones and shit. And I know you talking to your mama every day. Tell her you want the money back. And then to add insult to injury, you're going to sit up here and holler, Tenny, I don't know. I don't know why y'all can't get on the same page. What the hell you mean you don't know why we can't get on the same page? Because of you. Because you put this girl in such an awkward ass position to do something off the strength of being your fucking wife. I don't know if she's the wife at that time or just the girlfriend. But come on now. You know your mama was going to feel a way about making her send some money back. And that's why you put Tenny up to doing it. Tenny, like I said, you better than me, baby, because I wouldn't have did it. I'd have made him. No, absolutely the fuck not. You and your mama, fuck y'all relationship up alone without me. I don't want nothing to do with it because look what happened at the end of this episode. And I can't wait to lay into the mama ass, but we going to get there. Another mug working out, Joey. He go work out talking about he want to get fit for when Michael get out of jail. Sir, you need to be wanting to get fit for when they come and clink, clink your ass the fuck up. Because you trying to turn in this horrible ass Photoshop picture of you and Michael. And baby, Michael's like, <laughs> I don't think you should send that. I think Joey has said he had already sent it, baby. You better hope they don't flag your ass the hell down. That shit look like a laminated pick out of a Sears... <laughs> friend photo catalog where they trying to sell a photo package or something it does not look normal it does not look like y'all were it just don't look good you could tell he don't know what he's doing and if you don't know what you're doing you just don't need to do it at all especially if you call yourself being scared um you must not be i think for real he trying to get in there and get to michael i'm just saying we're gonna find out something else he was doing at the end of the episode too now, we meet Shantae and True. They weren't on the last episode. Um, Definitely an odd couple. We see her cooking. She likes to cook. She's saying that um, what she wants to do with True when he gets out of prison is she wants to start a restaurant with him. I don't see nothing wrong with that. I just hope this man don't get out. Some just tells me. Some tell me something in the buttermilk about them two ain't clean. I don't know. Um, Especially when she got to talking when the friends came over and they were snapping crab legs and dipping them in butter and stuff. And it didn't look that season. I'ma just go on and put it out there. I like my my seafood when I look at the corn and stuff. It need, it need to look orange. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. It need to almost look orange. Because that's how I know the flavor in it. I don't know no flavor in it if I see just a few specks of what look like maybe a little paprika. Maybe a little uh, Cajun seasoning. Little speckles. Mm -mm. It need to look orange. Sometimes he look brown, depending on how deep I want that butter flavor, garlic, all that limit, uh, orange or brown. Either uh, anything other than that, I don't know, and I don't really trust it. I feel like your seafood is gonna really taste fishy. Um, but yeah, they get to asking her about True and you know their relationship. We learned that she done spent about thirty k on True since she been with him. Never met him, but she know he don't like black women's. And she black. That's strike number one. That's what I'm talking about. Some in the buttermilk ain't clean. Cause, huh? Two, she have moved. Um, so now she's paying two mortgages. She moved so that when he gets out, he can par parole with her. Um, and while she's trying to sell her other home, she's paying two mortgages. D women's, you know, it's so crazy because you meet these women. Or the men that are outside doing extremely well for themselves, have a savings built up, got homes, and they will really fuck up their credit, fuck up their life behind chasing somebody in jail. I mean, it really is crazy to me. 
Um, and I, but I understand that's why the show is so interesting because I understand that people get fed by different stuff when it comes to relationships. And some people don't necessarily have to be with that person to be getting fed. They say that jail talk a mug though. <laughs> I ain't never heard it. They said the jail talk will make you put 30K on the phone and, and, and be hanging on to every word and, and let the man plant 800 cameras around your house and stuff. That's what they had said. Maybe I ought to try it out, psych. <laughs> but I'm excited to see how Shantae and True um, unfold because I just feel like it's going to be hell to pay the captain when he get out. I'm sorry. And then especially the way he was talking to her. He like... One thing about it, when it comes to the restaurant, you ain't going to be stepping on nothing I tell you to do. What the hell you mean? You've been in jail for years and you think you're going to get out and just start running a, a motherfucking business, just ground up. No, no assistance from nobody. That's why y'all get out of jail and fuck up and end up back in there. That's exactly how that happens. I don't want to hear it. If you want to help me cook, or if you got some more seasoning packets, that's really what he going to be good at. Because y'all know them jailhouse cooks too be all that. So he probably know how to put ramen seasoning and all kind of shit that he getting from the commissary together. And make a fire uh, seafood board. It's probably going to put her to shame. I'm going to just tell you the truth. I also found that it was sweet that True proposed to her through her son. Um, They always know how to get the mamas through the kids. Have her son propose get down on his knee and stuff which also i guess means that he gotta have a good relationship with the kids so that's good we just gonna see i ain't gonna even stay on it that long because it wasn't even too much of their segment now andrew getting ready to go get candace he done broke her louis bag while he packing it up baby <laughs> she finna cuss you out for that she pretended like it was okay on the phone when he told her babe i'm sorry I was zipping your bag up and I'm so sorry. The tag came off in my hand. And she said, why aren't you gentle? Sister was probably beat red fuming. You heard me. This motherfucker done broke my Louis bag. Oh my God. Then she finna also pull the okie doke on him. Because she done put in her bio that she willing to relocate. But she already asking him about looking at um properties and houses in Vegas. Now he's thinking that she's just going to have a temporary apartment that he's going to be paying for. In, uh, well, not Vegas, Nevada. I don't know if it's Las Vegas or what, but she keeps saying Nevada. But he's thinking that he's only going to be paying temporarily for this apartment. No, sister girl is talking about she don't plan on leaving until she regains some type of custody back with her um with her child and that's how they be getting them that's how they gooping the children with these bio yeah <laughs> ain't not say say less yes i will get out and come and live with you wherever fly me out come get me all that but then whole time they racking up money that you sending them they racking up all this because when they get out they got a list of shit they gotta do at home before they even thinking about really taking a relationship with you to the next level. I don't even feel like she's really worried about the relationship. With, oh my God, it really gives me Andy and Brittany so bad. It is so crazy because I feel like it's going to be the same thing. I feel like she finna get out and he's finna want to just be together and snuggle and cuddle and sister girl going to be like, back up, give me my shit that you got me and just, and get back. It ain't all that right now. I just got out. She was already, you know, making me feel away when she was saying stuff like, well, what if I accidentally make him feel rejected because of my own insecurities? No, ma'am, you know, you don't really like him like it already. And you trying to put it out there, put the groundwork in and be like, well, no, it wasn't because of you. It's because of my insecurity. No, ma'am, we ain't falling for it. Now he might. That's a good thing. We don't matter. He going to fall for it for a minute because he gone. He, he gone out for you. So, you know, you kind of good for right now. Now, Joey family meets Michael on um, the phone and or on the video chat. And I think that that was a big step for him. Uh, or I'm sorry, Michael meets Joey's family on the video chat. And I think that that was a big step because how intimidating is it? You know, you got this whole man family. And I mean, they had the living room packed out. Sisters, brothers, the mama, the daddy, all kind of everybody was in there. Um, and it was one 15 minute call. And while I get what Joey's trying to do, how he's trying to incorporate Michael into his family before he gets home, I just don't know if I think it's a good look that you meet him on the jail visit call. Am I, I mean, am I wrong, y'all? 
like, why you couldn't just wait till he came home and did it? And where y'all can actually sit down and talk. Michael couldn't wait. All right, we're, we're getting called a child. Gotta go. See you later. He couldn't wait to get the hell off that phone. And then it's like, you gotta be prepared because all the family was making they, um, they little, they jokes, they little jokey jokes throwing them at them. And the man is probably like, yeah, okay, I cuss one of you motherfuckers out. Her quick, fast, and in a hurry. But all in all, the visit did go good. You know, it was very short lived, but it did go good. So I guess the mission was accomplished. They got to know him a little bit better. But then some other shit come out. And I think it's really sad um, because Joey's family was really hurt when they found out. I think the sister was the one that said, now, you know, I'm scared when Michael come out because you relapse with Michael and he relapsed with needles. So that is something major. The daddy was crying. The mama was crying. That's really sad. You know what I mean? And while Joey tried to explain it wasn't Michael's fault that he relapsed. Yes, he was with Michael when he relapsed, but. He wanted to do it. He said that he was in a dark spot. He chose to do it. And Michael was actually the one who helped him through, um, like the, I guess when he used, he was all upset or whatever, you know what I mean? In his feelings, because he had been clean for 12 years or whatever. And he had used again. And he said, Michael comforted him and let him know that it was okay. And that he would, he would be all right. So, um, Michael might not be all that bad. It's just really hard to see the good qualities while he's in jail. Ayana go to anger management and it really wasn't too much to unpack her. Um, but we do find out that while she's in anger management, her attorney called. Them attorneys got the best uh, time to call, don't they? I don't know if they got pre-scheduled call times with her so that she can be on camera every time or what. But baby, one thing they're going to do is catch her in the scene. So they call and apparently she done set up a visit. Um... To go see Jamal um, the day after her court day or the day before the day after her court day. I think it's before because we find out that her court day actually gets pushed up. And she's like, damn, it's mean that I'm going to have to rearrange my whole damn visit. And I got a ride. I got a babysitter and all of this. And I'm going to have to rearrange everything. But really, we know that she's just really mad because that's the day that it fell on the visit with Jamal. And then you're not going to be able to go, you know. Um, it's unfortunate, but it happens, you know, when you out here getting in trouble and you already with a motherfucker in trouble, shit can get sticky real quick. You know, that's why <laughs> I'ma leave it at that. She can get sticky real quick. Now, Tenny go meet with uh, Rob's mama. Oh, the bitch is nasty. Oh, stank nasty. Soon as Tenny walk in, she got a little smile on her face. The mama just looking like she smelled doo-doo. Um, Tenny sit down and it's just like, how you doing? The mama just like, why we even here? You could tell the mama just already got such a nasty ass attitude. And she blames it all on this girl. Tenny starts explaining to her. She like, listen, I've done tried to reach out to you. Did you not get my mother say it? It wasn't enough. Bitch, what you mean? Oh, you got to watch it when you talking to these mamas. But I swear. Why are they be making you want to dab across the table? I would have dove. You understand me? Dove across that table. I couldn't take it. I wouldn't be able to take it. Tenny did way better than me for way longer than me, okay? But basically, the mama just nasty. You know why I don't like you. It stemmed from that situation with that money. And y'all don't make sure. Look how y'all living. First of all, what does that have to do with you? See, and this is what the thing about these mamas and these sons that will piss you off it's like you heard this girl just sit here and tell you that the reason she asked for that money back was because your son asked her to ask for the money back right but yet you still blaming it on her you still mad because she driving what the hell she driving if your son is the one that is funding her um and tenny said that rob has some type of business with his cousin or with somebody that he has money that he has access to. If your son is choosing to spend more money with this woman than with you, then you need to take that up with your son. Know what they do. They get mad at the woman because all they see in their head is this is the bitch that came and taking my man and his money away. Then she want to really hit low and say, well, when he was with the ex, 
She always made sure I was straight. She always came and bought me money and did this and called me and we communicated. Okay, honey, what in your son wasn't gone off her the way he was gone off me? That's not my problem. If your son is choosing to spend more of his money, resources or whatever on me than he was on her and he wasn't, he stopped doing the same things for you that he was doing when he was with her. That don't have nothing to do with me. Okay. I was proud of Tenny for getting up and just leaving. She said, okay, you know what? That's complete disrespect. And I won't come calling her name. Tenny, I thought we was talking now. Because if we keep talking, you ain't finna have no teeth. That's what's going to happen. If we keep talking, you ain't going to have an edge left around in, around in her line. Stop playing with me in here. Stop playing. And Tenny, you need to cuss Rob out too. Because Rob is the catalyst for all this shit. Setting up, talking about how much of a big dog you are in jail. But you got a problem going on with your mother and your woman. That you act like you on, you oblivious to. Baby, I'm not believing you no type of pie boss. You no type of, no, you pulling no type of rank in jail. If you can't get your household together. If you can't mend fences between your mother and your wife. Especially something that you start now and got peace. Y'all make sure y'all get down these comments and let me know what y'all thought about this episode. How do y'all feel about this Tenny and this Rob situation and the mama because I'm pissed about it and y'all make sure that y'all like the video y'all subscribe to the channel all that good stuff share the video y'all know I really appreciate that and also y'all know I'm gonna be back with the next one